for all those all those portions may god bless you so so can you hear me now okay so yes. uh, in the previous uh, 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 yeah in the previous classes we learned uh, that uh, in the book of revelation we see mainly there are uh, three types of judgments okay so i, I i'm just i mean uh, trying to connect all those points uh, for your more understanding because uh, we have been uh, discussing from uh, chapter up to chapter 16 at the same time we just skip the uh, chapter 12 13 and 4 i mean 14 so uh, we are going back to the portion and we are going to uh, i mean study something from uh, those portions you know uh, in the book of revelation uh, we can see mainly there are three types of judgments and uh, i already showed you the the slide of the chart of those judgments once but uh, i mean again let me give you that chart now that means only only three points are there so you already wrote it uh, no need to write it down again so uh, the three types of uh, judgments are the seven seal judgments are there from chapter 6 verses 1 through chapter 8 verse 1 okay so that is the seven seal judgments are there uh, which is going to happen during the time of the uh, during the time of the uh, great tribulation and the second uh, second uh, portion is the seven trumpet judgments okay the first one is the seven seal judgments and the second one is the seven trumpet judgments okay so that is from chapter 8 verses uh, verse 2 uh, through chapter 11 verse 19 and also the third uh, type of uh, judgment is the seven bowel judgments uh, seven bowel judgments and that is uh, from chapter 15 verses 1 uh, through chapter 16 uh, verse 2 okay these are the three main uh, uh, different types of judgments which is described in uh, uh, book of uh, revelation during the time of uh, the great tribulation so with that uh, that 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 topic is over and today we are studying uh, from chapter 12 13 and 14 chapter 12 13 and 14 and i already uh, announced in the group that uh, to read uh, chapter uh, 12 for today's class and i believe that you already uh, read all those portions and uh, it will be easy for you to understand the things that we are uh, trying to understand okay so i hope you you could you could notice uh, the thing that in between uh, we skip that chapter 12 13 and 14 uh, because there are there are some other important topics to discuss from those chapters and also uh, we know the details of trumpet judgments is completed by chapter 11 okay the the details of trumpet judgments are completed by chapter 11 and the details of bowel judgments begins from chapter 15. Okay. Uh, the details of uh, the bowel judgments begins from chapter 15 and continues to the chapter 16. Okay, beginning from chapter 15 and continues to the chapter 16, 12, 13, and 14, and uh, take uh, I mean uh, some of the important topics from uh, those chapters now, and we are moving into the the outline for chapter 12 and 13 okay so uh, i will give you some i mean uh, the 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 outline for the chapter 12 and 13 so by uh, knowing those outline uh, it is very easy to understand what is there in chapter 12 and 13 okay. there are many things written and uh, uh, there are many things mentioned in these two chapters at the same time uh, when you are getting this outline about those chapters it is very easy to understand what are the main portions that which is uh, described in those two chapters okay the first one is the woman and the dragon okay, we will explain all those things later but i'm giving the points only uh, the woman and the dragon the woman and the dragon from chapter 12 verses 1 through 6 then the second portion is the war in heaven the war in heaven chapter 12 verses 7 through 12 chapter 12 verses 7 through 12 and the third one is the war on earth the war on earth chapter 12 verses 13 through 17 and the next one is 
the war of beast from sea with the antichrist that means the battle or the war between the beast from the sea and with the, the antichrist okay so that is from chapter 13 uh, verses 1 through uh, 10 chapter 13 verses 1 to uh, 10 and again uh, the last one is the war of beast from the earth with the false prophet okay, the the uh, the previous one was the war of beast from the sea with the antichrist and the last one is the war of beast from the earth with the false prophet and that is from chapter 13 verses 11 to 18 so okay as i told you we will be discussing uh, many things about those points in the in the upcoming classes i guess i was giving uh, some of the main outline of those two chapters and also in chapter 12 and 13 we can see there are seven great persons of the great tribulation okay so listen so in during the time of the great tribulation um, uh, there will be uh, some of the prominent people in the screen to 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 do something to work for the lord you know god is allowing or god is permitting giving permission for many people uh, some of the prominent people to work among the among the among the people uh, during the time of the during uh, time of the great tribulation so especially in chapter 12 and 13 we can see there are mainly seven great persons of the great tribulation and uh, we are reading that from uh, from the bible you know you, when you when you look into the uh, look into the uh, chapter 12 you will understand what are those uh, i mean main and important great persons which is uh, uh, going to act in the great tribulation the first one is in uh, uh, verses 1 and 2 that is uh, the sun uh, a clad woman or you can call it as a the woman who is uh, uh, i mean clothed with uh, the the sun and the second thing is the great red dragon the great red dragon is there and the third one is uh, from chapter i mean verses 5 and 6 it is the man child or the male child and the seventh one is michael the angel and the uh, the, the fifth one is the blood of the lamb the blood of the lamb and the sixth one is the first beast the first beast and the uh, last one is the uh, second beast from the earth okay the sixth one is the first beast from sea and uh, uh, the second beast is from earth that is the seventh one that is in chapter 13 okay anyway you know when we study about the woman clothed with the sun that is from chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 yes elsa you can read uh, uh, chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 and a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth, pains and agony of giving birth. Okay, so in, in chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, we read about a woman who is clothed with the sun, who is clothed with the sun. Okay, so there are different opinions about this woman. So when you read those portion, uh some of you might have got some of the ideas about who is this woman but at the same time there are different opinions about this woman who is clothed with the sun okay suryane aninya stri suryane aninya striye kuriche pala abhiprayangal undu adine kurichana nammal chindikkan pogunnathu so the first opinion is uh this woman is the mary the mother of jesus woman is the mary the mother of jesus and the sun which is mentioned the child which is mentioned there is jesus christ so that is the first opinion about the woman clothed with the sun and the second opinion is uh, this woman is the bride of christ that means the new testament church the bride of christ or the new testament church and the male child mentioned in verse 5 okay, in in verse 5 uh, you can see a male child okay so that male child is the holy believers okay so that there is a second opinion about this portion that the 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 woman which is, who is uh, clothed with the son is the bride of christ or new testament church and the male child mentioned in verse 5 is the holy believers 
and the third opinion about this portion is the the woman who is uh, clothed with the sun is i mean is those who are the anointed with the holy spirit there are many people anointed with the holy spirit and also the male child is the unmarried pastors who are not defiled by women that means you now there are in in some churches in some denominations there are many unmarried pastors okay so those group people group of people those denomination they teach that this woman who is clothed with the sun is the anointed with the holy spirit and the male child which is mentioned in chapter in in verse 5 is the 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 people or the pastors who are not defiled by woman but these are the main and important uh, opinion, different opinions but the but at the same time it is believed that uh, maybe maybe by majority of the bible scholars that the woman clothed with the sun is israel and the male child is jesus this is what we believe you know the woman which is mentioned in chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 uh, the woman who is clothed with the sun suryane arinya stri clothed with the sun and most of the uh, bible scholars they believe that i mean that woman is equal to the nation of israel to the nation of israel and the male child which is mentioned in verse 5 is jesus christ okay so how can we believe that how can we believe that okay and uh, for to to get the answer for that uh, you understand that out of four women in revelation uh, one is israel okay out of four women in revelation one is israel and also you can see there are four women in book of revelation one by one let me tell you that the first one is in revelation chapter 2 verse 20 this is the first woman mentioned in uh, in book of revelation that is jezebel jezebel is the first woman mentioned in book of revelation that is from revelation chapter 2 verse 20 and uh, in revelation chapter 17 verse 4 you can see uh, there is a babylon the mother of harlots babylon the mother of harlots is the second woman which is mentioned in in book of revelation and the third one is in revelation chapter 19 verse 7 that is the bride that means the new testament saints the new testament saints are known as the bride of jesus christ the bride of jesus christ that is from revelation chapter 19 verse 7 and the fourth woman mentioned in book of revelation is chapter 12 verse 1 that is a woman clothed with sun a woman clothed with the sun that is israel the nation of israel and also how can we believe and how can we prove that the woman which is clothed with sun is the nation of israel the next point you can say is in the old testament israel is portrayed as wife of jehovah in old testament israel is portrayed as wife of jehovah okay so if you read some of the uh, old testament uh, uh, references you will understand uh, i mean uh, how can we say that um, uh, the, the 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 nation of israel is portrayed or pictured as the wife of jehovah let us read isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 for your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name and the holy one of israel is your redeemer the god of the whole earth he is called okay so there very clearly it says that i mean the the nation of israel is portrayed as the wife of jehovah and again one more verse jeremiah chapter 3 verse 6 jeremiah chapter 3 verse 6 the lord said to me in the days of king josiah have you seen what she said that faith faithless one israel how she went up on every high hill and under every green tree there and there played the war and i thought after she has done all these things she will return to me but she did not return and her treacherous sister judah saw it and the last verse also please read hosea chapter 2 verse 16. hosea chapter 2 verse 16.
Hosea chapter two. Two sixteen. Yeah. Um, and in that and in that day declares the Lord, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me my ball. Okay. So when you when you read this, I mean, uh, portions, I say chapter fifty four verse five, and Jeremiah chapter three verse six, uh, three verse eight, and Hosea chapter two verse sixteen. In all these references, you will understand that uh, in the Old Testament, we can see that, I mean, the, the nation of Israel is considered as the winning. And, uh, you know, most of the time, uh, uh, most of the time, those uh, people were uh, going away from the presence of God. The people were going away from the presence of God and they were just leaving uh, uh, God and they were uh, uh, moving into their own their own ways. So, in that, I mean, uh, I mean, in that situation also, we can say that uh, God is asking to the nation of Israel, why you are going uh, away from the the presence of God? Why you are going away from the presence of God, uh, even though you are the spiritually you are the wife of Jehovah? Okay. And again, the next portion is in the Old Testament. Uh, you can see Israel is pictured as a mother. Israel is pictured as a mother. Okay, so let us read Isaiah chapter 50, uh, chapter 50, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 1. Thus says the Lord, where is your mother's certificate of divorce, with which I have sent her away? Or which of my creditors is to whom I have sold you? Behold, for my for your iniquities you were sold, and for your transgressions your mother was sent away. And also fifty one verse eighteen. There is none to guide her among all the sons she has borne. There is none to take her by the hand among all the sons she has brought up. Okay. So again, in the Old Testament, uh, the people of Israel, the nation of Israel is pictured as a mother, as a mother, okay. And also, Israel is pictured as a woman with labor pain for giving birth to her child, okay. Especially in Isaiah chapter uh, 26, verses uh, 18 and 19, Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 21. In these particular verses, you can understand uh, the, the nation of Israel is pictured as a woman with uh, labor pain for giving birth to her child. Right? Okay, so that is what we understand from Isaiah chapter 26, read Isaiah chapter 26, verses 18 and 19. We were pregnant, we were withered, but we have given birth to the to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth, and inhabitants of the world have not fallen. Your dead your dead shall live their bodies shall rise you who dwell in the dust awake and sing for joy for your dew is a dew of light and the earth will give birth to dead okay thank you elsa so so from all these references all these uh, uh, bible verses we understand that uh, uh, most of the time the the nation of israel is considered as a woman or a mother uh, in 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 bible especially in the old testament and at the same time, these are the reasons that we can believe that which is uh, uh, mentioned in chapter Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. There is a woman who is clothed with the sun and that is the nation of Israel. Now, we will uh, go back to chapter 12 verses 5 and 6. Okay, Revelation chapter 12 verses 5 and 6. Okay, uh, read that uh, verses 5 and 6. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she, had, where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Okay, so we have been talking about the mother or the woman in verses one and two, but in Verses 5 and 6, we are reading about a male child. Okay? A male child is mentioned in verses 5 and 6. There is no doubt that this is Jesus Christ. Okay, This is Jesus Christ. 
and we have many evidences from from bible to prove that okay so you know how can we prove that this is jesus christ this is jesus christ okay the male child which is mentioned in verses 5 and 6 is a is a is jesus christ okay first of all the male child was to rule all nations with a rod of iron okay this male child was uh, supposed to rule all the nations with a rod of iron that is what we read in revelation chapter 19 verse 15 revelation chapter 19 verse 15 um 1915 from his mouth come a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with the rod of iron he will tread the wine press of the fury of the wrath of god the almighty and also read as psalm number two verse nine psalm number two verse nine you shall break them with the rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel okay so these verses we understand that the male child was supposed to rule over all the nations with a rod of iron okay so jesus christ was having that authority and jesus uh, uh, got that authority from god to rule over all the nations with a rod of iron okay and also we understand jesus was born in in, in a jewish family jesus was born in a jewish family okay so when you when you study about the bible references from from Genesis and Isaiah, and also some of the book of books of the uh, I mean uh, New Testament, we understand there are many Bible references which proves that there were many promises about the birth of Jesus Christ, and also there were many fulfillments which happened about the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay, especially when we, when you read Genesis chapter three verse fifteen, it is a it is a familiar. I mean, verse, we are not going to read those verses, okay? So it will take uh, more time to read all those portions because, because we have many things to cover today. So, so when you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and also Isaiah chapter 7, verse uh, 14, and Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and all these portions speaks, speaks about the promise of the birth of Jesus Christ. <laughs> that means Jesus is going to be born uh, as a prince of peace and uh, he will be the i mean eternal father and he will be i mean ruling over the nations so that is the prophecy and that is the promise and prophecy about jesus christ and his birth in the in the Old Testament. but when we read uh, romans chapter 9 verse 5 and revelation chapter 5 verse 5 we understand every promises and every prophecy is which is made of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament, in the New Testament, okay? So this is a great thing that we have to understand that Jesus Christ is alone, he is the person, he alone is, I mean, holding the, the power and the authority over all these worldly things, I mean? So Jesus is having the authority to rule over all the nations with a rod of iron. So we understand uh, uh the, the 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 male child which is mentioned in chapter 12 i mean verses 5 and 6 is none other than jesus christ according to these verses and again we will go back to uh, revelation chapter 12 verse 4. revelation chapter 12 verse uh verse 4 is one of the important i mean verse of this uh, chapter okay so read that verse also four his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Okay. So, you know, from, from this particular verse 4, we understand there is, a, there is a satanic attack. There is a satanic attack on Jesus and his people. Okay? There is a satanic attack on Jesus and his people. Let me, let me explain. Uh, uh, I mean, a little more about those points because it says that in in verse three, then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diamonds, and also his tail swept away the third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman 
who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth he might deliver her child so here we understand satan is trying to attack the woman the woman that means the the nation of israel and also satan is trying to deliver or attack jesus christ the male child okay so if you look into the history if we look into the history we understand the devil used many people to prevent messiah from being born because you know in the old testament there are many promises and there are many prophecies about jesus and his birth and it is jesus is known men so there are many i mean uh, prophecies and promises which is uh, uh, which is given in the old testament about when what is going to happen with uh, the people of israel and also what is going to happen with uh, in the history we understand that satan was always trying to attack jesus christ and devil was being born okay and satan is planning that the messiah or jesus christ should not born into this world okay for example for example you have in the screen you have many examples about uh, uh, some of the people uh, prominent people in the in the old testament okay the first person is abel abel was killed by cain so satan was using cain to kill abel to kill abel but god was turning that thing into a blessing for many people okay so satan fell by his own brother cain so that is the first thing and the second thing is haman haman was trying to destroy the jewish people the whole nation okay haman was trying to destroy the jewish people and the next person is pharaoh okay pharaoh is a familiar person for every one of us pharaoh was trying to kill all the male child to prevent moses the leader of israel to come up okay so god was in god's intention was that okay bring moses into the picture and moses when he comes and he will i mean deliver or he will bring all the people of israel from uh, the the bondage of the egypt but satan was using pharaoh and pharaoh was trying to kill all the male child to prevent moses the leader of israel to come up you know and again as this is the promised child was born from israel we know that and through i mean uh, mary uh, who was uh, the uh, who was a jew okay who was a jew and you know devil use pharaoh and also another person was babylonian king nebuchadnezzar okay so devil is using pharaoh and also the babylonian king nebuchadnezzar as a monster okay it is particularly written in ezekiel chapter 29 verses verse 3 and jeremiah chapter 51 verse 34 we read that verse then only we will understand you know so devil was using pharaoh as a as a as a monster and the the neck nebuchadnezzar as a great monster okay so you will understand it from ezekiel chapter 29 verse 3 ezekiel 29 verse 3 yeah speak and say thus says the lord god behold i am against you pharaoh king of egypt the great dragon that lies in the midst of his streams that says my nile is my own i made it for myself okay in that uh, i mean translation it is written a great dragon right a great dragon but in in other translation it is it is, it is written a, a a monster a monster okay and jeremiah chapter 51 verse 34 also jeremiah chapter 51 verse 34 nebuchadnezzar and the king of babylon has devoured me he has crushed me he has made me an empty vessel he has swallowed me like a monster he has filled his stomach with my delicacies he has rinsed me out okay in that translation it is written a monster okay so the a monster and a great monster who are those people 
Paro and the Nebuchadnezzar. You know, so uh, what happened was uh, uh, Satan or devil was using these people as a monster or as a as a as a dragon to to destroy the people of Israel, the people of Israel, and also. When you read uh, the the New Testament, you understand Herod, the king, was ordering to kill all the male child under two. Okay, so Herod, the king, was ordering to kill all the male child under two. Okay, and again, you know, after the forty days of fasting, when Jesus Christ was coming down from mountain, Satan was directly approaching Jesus and and putting a temptation before Jesus Christ. Amen. So, the purpose of Satan's temptation to Jesus was to to defeat the power of God, to defeat the power of God. And and Satan was knowing, and devil was knowing that Jesus has the power and Jesus has the authority. And Satan was trying to defeat that power of God. And Satan was trying to, I mean, defeat the the presence of Jesus Christ and the glory of Jesus Christ. But we understand Jesus Christ. I mean, overtook all those things, and uh, I mean, he became a victorious person among all the people. You know, even even at this time also, okay, even in the at the time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, okay, in at the time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, devil thought that it is finished, and there is no more Jesus and his works. But after the resurrection, Jesus proved that he is victorious. Amen. So during the time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, Satan and the whole world was thinking that okay, everything is over by the death of Jesus Christ. Okay, the work of Jesus Christ is over. The ministry of Jesus Christ is over. Nothing is going to happen after the death of Jesus Christ. But after the resurrection, Jesus Christ said, "I am victorious, and I got victory over the." Death and I got victory over the haters and I got victory over everything of this world and I am a victorious person. Amen. So through all these examples, we can show that and we can say that devil is always against the work and the power of Jesus Christ. Okay, he is always opposing the power and the work of Jesus Christ. Even today, we understand the devil. Knows if Jesus is born into a heart of a person, I mean, Satan becomes a failure and it's it's a loss for him. Okay, so there are there are many people accepting Jesus as a personal savior these days. At the same time, devil very clearly knows that if a person is accepting Jesus as his personal savior and if Jesus is born into a person's heart, I mean, Satan knows that it's a failure for him and there is a there is a big loss for him. So we have to understand the scheme and the agenda of devil. Okay. So many times we, the, the the Christians, the people of God, we are not knowing what is the scheme of uh, Satan or what is the agenda of Satan. Okay. We have to understand what is the agenda of devil. It is to take away the peace and the presence of Jesus from our personal life, from our family life, from our generation. From our church and from our society, so most of the time, we the people of God are not aware about when what is going to happen in a family. In my is entirely different, and uh, the devil is trying to take away uh, the, the the glory of Jesus Christ from our heart, from our family. From our church and from our society and all the areas of our life, so we have to be very, I mean, attentive to all these things. And devil is trying to attack in every possible way. Okay, and sometimes he creates the divisions in our family and church. Okay? Sometimes he is trying to create the divisions in our family and in our church. Because he know that if a family members are divided, he gets victory. Okay, when the family members of a Christian is divided, is divided, Satan gets victory. And he know if a church members are united together in the name of Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ would get the victory. 
Okay, so knowing that Satan, devil, is always trying to attack and defeat the children of God, the power of Jesus Christ, and the church, I mean, unity and everything. So he is always active, actively working to defeat the power of Jesus and to destroy the families and the churches. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, as we are continuing this study of the I mean, book of Revelation chapter 12, amen, be careful and be attentive always so that devil cannot attack any one of us. Amen. So devil is trying to attack every one of us, but at the same time, if you're praying and if you're praying for your children, that they may they may be rooted, I mean, in the word of I mean, word of God, and also they will be guided, I mean, by the Spirit of God in these coming days. Amen. So let us pray for all our family members. Let's pray for church people. Let's pray for our children so that they will be, I mean, rooted in the Bible, in the word of God, and they will be always, I mean, having the guidance of the Holy Spirit in their personal life. Amen. So may God bless you all for that. And uh, let us come back to Revelation chapter 12, verses uh, 4. And five. So I was trying to, I mean, give you some ideas about how Satan is working, even on those days in the Old Testament time and the New Testament time. Satan and the devil is working in a different way to defeat and to attack. I mean, God and also the Church of God. Okay, so we will go back to chapter twelve, verses four and five once again. Uh, would you please read uh, those verses once again, Elsa? Four and five. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Amen. So in these particular verses 4 and 5, we see the devil was trying to defeat or to or to devour the woman and the child. Okay, so Satan is trying to defeat the woman and also the child, the child, that means the male child. Okay, but we see the protection of God there in verse 5. Okay, in verse 4, we understand devil is trying to attack, devil is I mean trying to defeat. The woman, that means the, 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 the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, and also, I mean, Jesus Christ. At the same time, we understand God is providing a protection for the people of God and also for Jesus in verse 5. In verse 5, that a child was caught up to God. It is written that the child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled or fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God. Okay, prepared by God, I mean, um, uh, prepared by God, uh, there uh, would be, I mean, uh, nourished for 1260 days. That means three and a half years. Okay, so listen. So when Satan is trying to attack his people, when Satan is trying to attack or have a battle with the church of God, then there is a protection by God. And God will protect every one of us, and God will protect, I mean, the people of God. God will, God will protect the church. I mean, so when we are surrendered, when we are submitting ourselves in the hands of God, God's protection is there. But the same thing we read there that the child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God. Then, so God is a God who, who can care for the people of God. I mean, so this particular place was prepared by God, prepared by, by God for that woman. That means for the I mean, nation of Israel. At the same time, God is able to provide and prepare a place for every one of us as the New Testament children, New Testament I mean, believers, I mean, which means Jesus and his people are protected by God always. Jesus and his children are protected by I mean, God always. I mean, even, you know, we know that in these days, we hear there are there are many persecutions. Okay? So in different places, not only in India, in different countries, there are many persecutions happening. Okay? So the spirit of Antichrist is still working hard 
to defeat the church. Okay? So this is this is what we understand from the persecutions of the churches, especially in North India and everywhere, when there are many persecutions, when it is happening, we have to understand there is a spirit of Antichrist. There is a spirit of Antichrist which is prevailing among, among the people of this world, the worldly people, and they are working hard to defeat the church. But we know that the ultimate victory belongs to our God and his church. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And God is having the ultimate victory. And the ultimate victory is, belongs to God. Amen. And even, even if the people, the, the anti-Christians are, I mean, are trying to defeat the Christianity, even if they are persecuting the Christian churches and the pastors and the people, I mean, we understand we have the victory and Jesus Christ already got victory over all these things and the ultimate victory belongs to God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So that is what we understand from that particular, I mean, four verses four and five. And again, in verses three and four, in verses three and four, there is a particular topic which is called the great red dragon. Okay? The great red dragon dragon which is mentioned in verses three and four okay can you read that verses also uh, three three only three yeah and another sign appeared in heaven behold a great red dragon with seven heads and ten hordes horns and on his head seven diadems okay so in um uh, not only in verse uh, three in verse nine also chapter 12 verse nine read uh, verse nine also and the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Okay, you know, there are, there are many names given in that particular verse uh, for devil. Okay, the great dragon, uh, the, the, the old serpent, and the devil and Satan, all those things are there. Okay, in, in this, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, verse 9. So, when you read uh, in verse 3 about the great red, I mean, uh, dragon, uh, that is the same, I mean, Satan himself. Okay, so the same thing. Okay, the, the, the red dragon is the same Satan. Okay, so the same person. So, what are the speciality for, specialities of uh, this red dragon? Okay, in that particular time, that, uh, I mean, uh, red uh, dragon uh, from from heaven, I mean, up, uh, okay, it is appeared in heaven. Okay, so what are the specialities of that? I mean, dragon. Okay, it's a great dragon. It's a great dragon, which means that reveals the great power and control in the world. That means Satan, the devil, has the power, has the control over the world now. Okay, and the second thing is there is a color which is written red or fairy red. Okay. In John chapter 8, verse 44, it is it is written fairy red. Okay, so what is the meaning of that? The color is red. The color of the of the dragon is a red color, which is associated with the death. It speaks about the death. Okay, and also Satan is a murderer. Chapter 8, verse I mean John chapter 8, verse 44 says that Satan is a murderer. And also in this particular verse 3, it says that. There are the seven heads. There are seven heads which represents the mountains. Okay, that is in Revelation chapter 17 verse 9. Okay, Revelation chapter 17 verse 9 says that the the seven heads which is on the dragon is uh, the mountains. Okay, and again there are ten horns. There are ten horns on the head of this dragon which represents the seven ten kings. The ten horns represents the ten kings, which is already written in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. And also, there are seven diamonds on his head. There are seven diamonds on his head. It speaks about his perfect authority in the worldly system. In the worldly system. So the world has a system, and now the world system is controlled by this dragon or this Satan. Okay, so that is the meaning of that picture of the dragon. So the dragon speaks about the Satan himself 
and also the dragon has some of the specialities and we will be uh, discussing uh, and covering all those portions or the, all those points later as we uh, move on to the next two chapters okay now we don't have time to i mean uh, uh, elaborately speak about all those things we will be covering all those portions when we go to the the next chapters okay and and even in in chapter 13 and 17 and all the chapters speaks about all these things we will go on into into that portion later now uh, you know in in chapter 12 in chapter 12 the main topic is the battle of satan with the people of israel okay the battle of satan with the people of israel during the time of great tribulation okay so when we study about the great tribulation we understand there will be many battles there will be many wars happening in between many people okay the 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 heavenly angels will come down and the worldly worldly people will have the i mean uh, the battle and uh, the satanic angels and satan himself antichrist and all those people will be having a battle with uh, the other people with the other nations and everything will, will happen during the time of the great tribulation okay so that is, so chapter 12 is the explanation uh, about all those battles at the same time in this particular chapter we see the work of devil is manifested in four different manners okay so in this particular chapter 12 uh, which very clearly speaks about how devil is going to manifest his works okay in different manners okay so he is using different different schemes to work among the people during the time of the great tribulation which is written in chapter 12 okay the first thing is in verses 1 and 6 that is satan is the murderer okay murder he is the murderer so that is what we read in chapter 12 verses 1 and 6 and she satan is a deceiver satan is a deceiver that is what we read in um, revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9 revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9 and also satan is an accuser satan is an accuser the revelation in chapter 12 verses 10 and 11 revelation chapter 12 verses 10 and 11 and also satan is a persecutor satan is a persecutor chapter 12 verses 11 and 17 chapter 12 verses 11 and 17 So these are the four main specialities of Satan, which is mentioned in chapter 12. Okay, so in in chapter 12, Satan says that okay, Satan is a murderer, killing the people. Okay, and uh, Satan is a deceiver, deceiving the people. He is an accuser, accusing the children of God, and he is trying to persecute. So you know, totally, when we study about all these things, we have to understand one thing that uh, uh always satan is trying to attack i mean a god and trying to attack god and also trying to attack the people of god okay and destroying the churches and destroying the the presence of god a uh, among the among the people of god and destroying and defeating the peace of god which is in the in the in the christian families okay so we have to be very careful about all these things and uh, so we have been studying from now from chapter 12 that uh, there is a red dragon and we are just completing and, and, and finishing that point there and we'll be discussing about uh, from maybe from chapter 13 about the the first beast from sea and also uh, the second beast from the earth in the upcoming classes okay so may god bless you all and this is the uh, final portion that we have been discussing from chapter 12 because uh, we have to understand one thing that but God is in control and when our we are gathering together for prayer or the or the Bible study or something we have to think about you know I mean God has a purpose about every one of us at the same time Satan is always trying to defeat his church and his people at the same time the ultimate victory belongs to God and for the people of God okay? so God will control everything 
and God will give and protect every everyone. And even we were just I mean I mean uh, explaining all those points when I was I mean thinking about that when we read that uh, when uh, 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 Satan is attacking the people of God and even even Jesus, but God prepared a particular place for I mean that woman and also God prepared a particular place for the child. Okay, so God is in control and our God is protecting every one of us. Let us all, I mean, give us up in the mighty hand of God. Nothing the world can do towards the people of God, but God will, I mean, sustain us. God will help us, every one of us, and God will give all, provide all the needs of the people. Let us pray for that. Amen.